What style's going to win out, Roxy? The speed of the Aggies or the size of GCU? Opening tip controlled by Grand Canyon. They're in the whites. New Mexico State wearing the black. Michael Reed, Deldre Carr, Larry Spaulding, a terrific officiating crew for this title tilt. And an offensive foul immediately, as Larry Spaulding calls it, against Grand Canyon. Uh, let them play. Nervous energy. Let the guys settle it. Let them settle it. It's too much riding on it. That's a cheap foul. Fouls on Alessandro Laver. Two-time first team all whack performer. Starting five there, as you saw for Chris Jans and New Mexico State. Coming in here, the Aggies have won five in a row, seven of their last eight, including two games already here in Las Vegas. While Grand Canyon, because they were the one seed, only had to play with a bye in the semifinals last night. As a shot clock violation, New Mexico State a turnover. There is Bryce Drew in his first year at Grand Canyon, three years at Vanderbilt, five at his alma mater, Valparaiso, and now in his first season, leading the Antelopes. He's going with the suit and tie. We asked he's him been about doing. <laughs> He's clean. Here's the three from the corner, and that rattles off of the rebound controlled by Johnny McCants for New Mexico State. Roxy, you can see the intensity. Both teams are sitting down, guarding the three-point line. Look at the white jerseys trying to run them off that three-point line. Donnie Tilden with the game's first points. An important piece we just said in the open. He's an X factor because he can score inside outside and you and I watched him grow up. We watched him for years play at Utah. So he should play a big game. There's a steal. And it's 4 nothing, New Mexico State. Evan Gilliard the steal and bucket. Great start for the Aggies. Grand Canyon has been following them. They're the bully on the block. And so they won the regular season. GCU won the regular season, but this can be considered the Aggies annual tournament. How many times they've been to the championship round? This is their 10th appearance and ninth in a row. Rocks two distinctive styles. The speed right now, you see those big jerseys in the white, a seven foot front line, seven foot and six foot ten. So the smaller guys in the black jerseys don't want to get right there. They don't want to get that opportunity going. Johnny McCants blocks the shot of Asbjorn Midgard. Here is McCants. Stepping out. Rolls and falls off as Johnny McCants, who's a decent three-point shooter. And then Donnie Tillman poked it away and got it for the Aggies. Evan Gilliard, the pull-up. And the loose ball batted around and diving for it. New Mexico State is everywhere in the early going, but can't get the three from Jabari Rice. Here come the Antelopes in transition. Collision, offensive foul. Good call. Good call. Every level. Stop right there and just kiss it off the glass. You can't over penetrate if you're Dixon. Right here. Charge oh, you on passed Mikey that Dixon. one. Ah, right there. You can't give away possessions right there. That's a cheap one. Adrian, you think nerves are playing in a little bit for Grand Canyon? Oh, absolutely. Both of them, you, you, you don't, in fact, you want to get to that first 16-minute block, get that timeout, and get your star players without a foul. Absolutely. And by Alessandro Laver for the Antelopes. There's no motivation for a championship game. Both teams know what's at stake. And Grand Canyon gets on the board as Dixon hits the big, the long two-pointer. And the first points for Grand Canyon. Johnny Tillman backing in. Got to run the help right there. Good defense from SBR and Midgard. Here comes Grand Canyon. 
A three in transition is way off from Alessandro Laver. And it goes out of bounds to New Mexico State. Chris Jans. We welcome those of you just joining us at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. It is the WAC Championship. Those of you just seeing Eastern Washington get the automatic bid for the Big Sky Conference. The WAC tournament title on the line tonight between New Mexico State and Grand Canyon with Adrian Branch, Roxy Bernstein with you. An early 4-0 lead for New Mexico State. The Grand Canyon got a deep two for Mikey Dixon, 4-2 in favor of the Aggies. Open, Donnie Tillman now attacks. Johnny McCant, shot clock winding down, off balance, and the rebound falls to Gabe McLaughlin for GCU. Yeah, that Grand possession. Canyon trying to get to the NCAA tournament for the first time in school history as Javon Blackshire with a three, and the Antelopes have taken the lead. What a big time shot for a young man who's going to have to play maybe all game long, at least 35 minutes in this game, Roxy. Step back and a straight on three is way off from Clayton Henry. That was just a flat out brick. <laughs> but for Clayton, get that out your system. They're going to need his speed and quickness to offset the size of GCU. New Mexico State has missed their last five shots. And another turnover by the Antelopes. That's four already by Grand Canyon. You don't mind turnovers as long as you're not picking up fouls. Fouls you can't recover from. Turnovers you can recover from early on because the energy level is so high. Donnie Tillman gets to the bucket. Second bucket for Tillman. Roxy, we're seeing him play with an assertiveness. He's an upperclassman. He's been on the big stage. He's delivering right now. Back and down the jump hook rolls in for Asbjorn and Midgard. And he's tugging at the jersey saying, I need a breather, coach. I'm a little winded. <laughs> I wonder if he's looking off saying, ha ha, I can't see you. Too much, too, uh, too much graffiti out here. I can't see you. Universal sign saying, I need a breather. <laughs> Jabari Rice from deep and a three. All the stars are showing up. Rice is showing up. Ash has shown up now. Form. Blackshear has shown up. All the key guys for both teams are making an impact so far. And the pull-up ties the game oh. at nine as the flow is starting to come for both sides here. Hey, Rox Roxy, you might as well sit at home in your basement and kick off your shoes. <laughs> this one's going to run did itself. That. Oh, you already, I've already did. done that. <laughs> I, are, I am in my home studio. The good thing about a home studio, you don't have to wait for the bathroom if you're over 50. <laughs> Been a long time without a whistle. And there is a whistle. And the foul against Evan Gilliard, the second senior from Chicago on New Mexico State. You're the three seed this year, but Chris Jans' program it's basically turned into the New Mexico State Aggie Invitational. I mean, they've won 10 straight games in this tournament. The last time they lost a game in this tournament was when they lost to Bakersfield, who's now, by the way, in the Big West Conference, in the championship game of 2016. So they've won each of the last three WAC tournament championships and nine in program history. And they've been in the league since 2005. Yeah, they, they went to work. I remember big Sim Bular. Remember him? Seven oh, three. yeah. The drop-in from Gabe McLaughlin, and it's Grand Canyon that's up five as the Antelopes have made their last five shots on a 7 nothing run. Well, what I'm looking at is the Lopes. They're matching the intensity of the Aggies. So where you're seeing a check, where you're seeing the hustle board, you're looking at the white jerseys trying to mature and not be outworked. And the rebound, there is McLaughlin on the defensive glass. GCU. Six of nine from the floor. And one of the most efficient teams in the country. Absolutely, because your best player shoots 73%. Nice ball fake. 
Left it short. And a great stroke by Javon Blackshirt. He has Roxy, eight what, already. We saw some good GCU teams. I haven't seen them match the intensity like I'm seeing from New Mexico State. And for New Mexico State, they're a solid team. They are as tough as they come, but I'm watching GCU match the toughness. Ten straight for Grand Canyon. Scoring drought of about four minutes now for the Aggies. Knocked away, and Grand Canyon comes away with it in a steal. Uh, uh, Rox, I, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest with you. My mouth is open. I'm like, wow, look at this, this team in the white who is being so tough. This, this is not something you usually see in a championship game with them. They are, they are taking it to the bully. I say that in Roberts compliment. called for the foul. It seemed like it took Grand Canyon a couple minutes to feel comfortable, Adrian, but now they, it looks like they've found their game. They got in rhythm because they hit early shots. And what happens is, you know the buildup, even if you try not to watch the papers or the text, and nowadays it's not so much paper, but you, you're hearing what they're seeing on the Internet. You have the scouting report, you have that competitive energy, and then the setting itself. So there's a lot riding, and after you get that sweat going up and down a few times, both teams usually get into it by the middle of the first half. This is the third meeting between these two teams. Both of them previously took place in Phoenix. At Grand Canyon is Oscar Freyer missing a three for the Lopes. And they're both up more close ball games than Grand Canyon found ways to win each of them. There's a deep three on the way and off the mark from Johnny McCants. And the rebound controlled by Grand Canyon. If you notice, both teams step well beyond the three-point line when they're defending. They get up and they try to close out on a three-point shot. What GCU has is that size, those points in the paint. And that big front line that they have is play well. Nice pass to a cutting Oscar Freyer. Timeout, New Mexico State. And a 12-0 run for the Antelopes. A beautiful feed. Grand Canyon up 10. And the app. Chris Jans needing a 30, trying to stop a 12 0 run for Grand Canyon, and everything is getting challenged right now by the Antelopes. Their defense, Adrian, seems to be really suffocating New Mexico State. Well, both teams are very aware of each other, so you're not going to surprise anything. I love that timeout with Chris Jans. Remember what he said to us? He said in the big game, one of the last things in his ears is he's going to use his timeouts. That was a great timeout to try to settle his team. And that ends the drought as Evan Gilliard hits it from the corner of three and ends the 12-0 run for Grand Canyon. Yeah, uh, two good teams. They're going to make runs. That was a good time out to settle them down. Both teams are playing the right way, so they should get high percentage shots or get to the free throw line. Go straight up. Hooked away by Johnny McCants, recovered by Asbjorn and Midgard. And the kick out for a three. Four threes for Grand Canyon, the second for Chance McMillan. Roxy at halftime, and I know it's eight minutes to go, there's going to be some tired pups, <laughs> but they're letting it all out. Remember Coach Jan said, it's no such thing as tired. It's no such thing as fatigue. Both teams are letting it hang out. GCU is trying to guard that three-point line because New Mexico State has a knockout punch when they're hitting the three. And another one goes down for Evan Gilliard. Hilliard has eight of the Aggies' 15 points. Yeah, and they've all been good shots. He hadn't taken a bad shot yet. I mentioned the efficiency of Grand Canyon. They're top 15 in the country in both offensive and defensive field goal percentage. Yeah, that, now, look at that. When you see that right there at the glass, both teams missed that one right there being that big. But when the shot goes up, both teams are attacking the glass. Both teams have outstanding rebound margins on the year as Donnie Tillman clanks that three. And here comes Grand Canyon is Grand Canyon fifth in the country at better than plus nine and a half rebounding per game as Donnie Tillman 
the defensive board for New Mexico State. And, Greece, and New Mexico State down. is nearly plus seven per game. Yeah, well, the pace is settled down right now, so this is a time where you're breathing deeply. You don't want to pick up cheap fouls. Trust your offense when you're running an offense. Defense, five guys, move as one. Off balance in the lane. Mikey Dixon can't get it to go. Last touch by Grant Canyon. It belongs to New Mexico State. The out rebounding New Mexico State, 15-7. The only number that Bryce Drew, the coach for Grand Canyon, will not be happy with is the five turnovers to start the game. But they settled in, and they're playing their style of basketball right now, and it's what made it successful for Bryce Drew in his first year in Phoenix. Yeah, it's interesting. Now, for the Aggies, you would think they were down by 15 points the way the white jerseys have been so active, but that three-point line is the great equalizer. That's a good matchup right there. And the spin move from Donnie Tillman. And a foul called against Grand Canyon. And it's on Gabe McLaughlin, his first. We saw him at Utah, as we mentioned. Good matchup right there. Two guys that really can will, athletic. But he's a go-to guy now. Remember, he was a role player when he was in the Pac-12. He's been a go-to guy, and he's delivered. They're trying to win a championship. And a lot of it has to do with Donnie Tillman and the way he's played of late. Good box out by Oscar Freyer, and he tipped it to Alessandro Labor, and Grand Canyon controls. It's one and done for New Mexico State. Nice hesitation dribble. Von Blackshire can't get it to go. Gets it back. Nice drive to the bucket, but it falls off for Chance McMillan, but another offensive rebound for the Antelopes. This is where the offensive rebound makes you have to defend for another 10 to 15 seconds. And one, Alessandro Labor. Roxy, that possession is what I would show at halftime. The missed shot, the getting it back, and then taking it right there to put back. That's just size, taking your time, resetting the offense, and then moving it around for Labor. Good job, Kirby. Top five all-time leading scorer in program history. 113th career start tonight for Labor. Over 1,600 career points in the end one free throw. It gives the Lopes a 10-point lead again, matching their largest. Yeah, that's what it is, size. So that's six foot ten. They don't have the Aggies don't have that size down low. They're going to give you everything they have, but that missed shot is so important to blocking out. New Mexico State, this is their third game in as many days, and an offensive foul, Donnie Tillman knocking down Gabe McLaughlin. First on Tillman, but New Mexico State had to beat UT Rio Grande Valley on Thursday. As you see the offensive foul from Tillman knocking McLaughlin down. And then last night, the two seed Utah Valley took care of them holding the Wolverines to 30% from the floor. And the WAC player of the year, Fardaz Emak, they held him scoreless. But now Grand Canyon goes up 12 as the pull up jumper for Blackshirt, who has 10 points already. Yeah, you know what Coach is aware, Coach Jans is aware of his team. He knows he went against a big front line, and he negated it. He said this is a different animal, what they're going to face tonight. Clayton right Henry there. nails a three. Yeah. That right there, Henry as well as Tillman have to be an X factor to negate the size of GCU because 6'10 and 7 feet are big on every play. First points for Henry. There is Alessandro Laver again. Roxy, both teams have an offensive rhythm now. GCU knocking down shots. Look at Labor, 51% on the season. He's been lights out in 71% from his tag team partner. He's strong from Clayton Henry. And fighting for the rebound and a tie-up. It belongs to the Aggies and New Mexico State.
3.56 to go, first half. Grand Canyon's up double digits. Delopes trying to get to the big dance for the first time. And they've been in the league since 2014, so you're talking about, what, seven years, Rox? Yeah, that but is... keep in mind they had that transitional period where they weren't eligible okay. to go to the NCAA tournament. While, of course, on the other side, New Mexico State is used to being in this position. And Grand Canyon is too. They've been in the championship game each of the last two. Just haven't won it as New Mexico State with the answer and a three that goes down for Jabari Rice. Now again, New Mexico State is first in conference at three point field goal attempts. So they're a three point shooting team. You're not comfortable with this lead. You have to continue to attack. The ball movement. Chance McMillan winds it up again. Third three for Chance McMillan. McMillan only averages three points a game, and those have been clutch baskets. Grand Canyon five for ten from downtown. From downtown rattles out from Johnny McCants. And Javon Blackshear the rebound. Attacking Sean Miller Moore. The transfer from Oregon State. That's a heck of an athlete. Sean Miller Moore can jump out the gym. He's got to go stronger than that, Roxy. He's too good of an athlete not to go up there and let his presence be felt. Shot clock at 10. Jabari Rice up one foot. Can't get the roll. That's Bjorn Midgard the rebound for Grand Canyon. Good ball movement from Grant Canyon. Sean Miller Moore is clobbered, will get to the line. Better, better job by Miller Moore going up with the dunk attempt. Gonna show you some right here coming up. Oh, come on, that's a bologna sandwich. Come on, I'm 57, I'll give you more than that. You're too good of an athlete, but this is a lot better. Yes, go up there with the dunk attempt. Have a short memory. It's the next play, the next play, the next play. Only a 48% foul shooter. And one more for Sean Miller, more the native of Toronto, who played his junior college ball with Arizona State standout Alonzo Verge. Went to Oregon State, played one year for Wayne Tinkle and the Beavers, who were in Las Vegas playing in the Pac-12 championship game. They're trying to crash the party and get to the big <laughs> dance. They'll take on Colorado at T-Mobile Arena. As it, there's five conference tournaments in Las Vegas. Yeah, you, you take your pick from Miller Moore, Oregon State, possibly a championship, GCU possibly a championship. He's got good taste. Largest lead for the Antelopes. Trying to take away that three-point shot. And the steal for Javon Blackshirt. For the post up. If you're GCU, that's right there. That's where you want to put pressure on the Aggies. Alessandro Labor cuts to the goal. Fundamental basketball, Roxy. Work what you have. What are you? You're the bigger team. You pound the paint, so that's what you try to do. Now, for the Aggies, who's the reigning conference champ, what's your strength? The three point shot. Here's Good Donnie shot. Tillman. Rattles in for Tillman. New Mexico State, 6 of 17 from 3, but 3 of 10 from 2. Well, they're going in here. They were beat up pretty good in the paint, but they knew that. They're still in good shape. And with a three-point uh, three shooting team, that's only four possessions. Javon Blackshire again for Grand Canyon. I would say both teams have gotten what they want. That's a make it The follow from Johnny McCants. <laughs> hey, Rox, both teams are getting what they want. <laughs> this offensively, because you can't cut off everything, but for the first half, New Mexico State is going to go in and say, okay, we can play better. We took their best shot. Now we're going to throw everything in the second half. GCU has to, again, pound the paint. 
hit first, as both teams are trying to do coming in the second half. Here's Blackshear. Inside five to shoot, launching a three. Spins and goes. Blackshear, a huge first half. From beyond midcourt, almost went in for Evan Gilliard. The Grand Canyon is up 15 at the half in the WAC championship on New Mexico State. They shoot 57% from the floor in the first half. And Javon Blackshear leading the way for the Antelopes. Really stifled New Mexico State from Grand Canyon in the first half. Yeah, and I'm really surprised there's been no free throw attempts as well for the Aggies. So that's the first 20 minutes. First 20 minutes are in the books. Coach Jans, this has been their annual tournament. Let's see them make that adjustment and throw all caution to the wind. Get ready. If you're not in shape and that mentally tough, you're not going to last for 20 minutes. Grand Canyon trying to get to the NCAA tournament for the first time. With Adrian Branch, Roxy Bernstein with you. The WAC championship is Oscar Freyer the miss for the Lopes. And a foul going for the rebound. It's on Grand Canyon. Are you watching them warming up and you don't see anybody five feet inside the paint. Everything right now, and I know sometimes one group goes out to the three-point line, but nobody's shooting a five-footer. Everything is at the three-point line. It's no knock on Chris Jans. He knows what the heck he's doing, but this is who they are. This is a three-point shooting team, and you saw that in warm-up. Chris Jans has a winning percentage of slightly under 80% in his four years yeah. at New Mexico yes. State. He is 95 and 24. Johnny Tillman for three, so practice makes perfect, right? That's who they are. Hey, Rox, that's who they are. So there's a saying, you live by the three-pointer, you die by it. But again, this is for the championship. This is for the NCAA tournament. GCU is trying to be the new kids on the block. They won the regular season. Let's see if they can get a double. <laughs> Oscar Freyer has Grand Canyon hanging tough. Oscar's Sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> you did it. I did. Don't worry. You did it. <laughs> I'm trying to get along with you, Rocks. This is the championship. You are my guy. I That's love why you, we got to bring our A game tonight. It's the championship. <laughs> Tough step away. And the rebound falls to Alessandro Labor for Grand Canyon. For GCU, they try to go inside, play inside first. Right there. Big to big. And a foul inside as... Asbjorn Midgard was bumped, and it's on Jabari Rice, his first. Now watch the size difference. That's six foot ten, throwing it to seven feet. Seven foot on a little guy like you. He's about six three, six two, about your size, right, Rox? Keep going down to get to me. <laughs> okay, I got a couple sorry. more floors below that. <laughs> oh, okay. Six feet and a half with some stats on. <laughs> You're still giving me way too much. And one. <laughs> As Bjorn Midgard. Midgard and Laver in the two games that they've played have averaged 26 points and 12 rebounds. This is pounding the post inside. Nothing cute, fancy. This is like an M1A1 tank. It's the tank division going against the air division of the Aggies. Black newcomer of the year, As Bjorn Midgard. Hits the free throw and the largest lead for Grand Canyon. Rocks, this is an important possession. You've got to stay connected. You don't want to play catch up for most of the second half. Let's see if they can get a high percentage shot or get to that free throw line for the first time. Deep three. Evan Gilliard comes up empty and again, one and done is Grand Canyon not giving New Mexico State anything. And you wonder, Adrian, with all these missed shots. Now, Grand Canyon's a terrific defensive team. But New Mexico State's playing their third game in three days, where Grand Canyon got a bye in the semifinals last night. This is their second game of the tournament. It's the offensive foul against Mikey Dixon. True. Everything you're saying is true. And you start seeing the fatigue coming in later on around the 10 minute mark. And look at the lowest opponent's field goal. That's just a commitment. Houston's done a fabulous job. You see, remember I just said you see Irvin. <laughs> I'm sorry, you <laughs> see Irvine. I got away from you. 
His scoop on the way to the hoop from Evan Gilliard. You gotta make a stop now. It's important that you gotta start making some stops and cutting to, into this lead. You want to be under 10 minutes, up 10 points by the 10 minute mark. Rattles in and three more. This is absolutely crunch money shots that GCU has been hitting. And now. It's on the Aggies to come back and match it. And the rebound falls to Grand Canyon. Gantz is one for five. Hadn't taken a bad shot, but that three hadn't fallen for him yet. Approaching 16 and a half minutes to go, and Grand Canyon has their largest lead. The up and under and the step through. Jabari Rice. And the coach said that he had three players to miss this season with ankle surgery. Three of them. Rice was one of them that had an ankle surgery. What an important he missed piece. time in December and January. And look, the story has been well chronicled what New Mexico State has had to go through just to keep this season going. As the three rattles out, nearly went down for Oscar Freyer, and it's controlled by New Mexico State. Two players that's taking good shots in the flow. One is Oscar Freyer. I like what I'm seeing. He hadn't hit it, but those are good shots you've got to take. And that young man with the ball, Johnny from Las Cruces. And this is on your left what you're seeing of what New Mexico State has had to go through this season. Because with the public health guidelines in the state of New Mexico, forced the Aggies to relocate. They spent 75 days in Phoenix. They didn't play a home game all season. And here they are in the WAC championship, but in a big hole. Holding New Mexico State to 36% from the field. And they stifled him in the two matchups earlier this season. In the first game, New Mexico State shot only 31% in their loss in Phoenix as Donnie Tillman short on a three. And the loose ball picked up by Grand Canyon and then the following night as they played back to back on weekends a series this year in the WAC with the adjustments to the schedule and in game two New Mexico State shot 37 percent and there's some more hustle points for Grand Canyon and Javon Blackshire who has 17. Well one of the biggest things I'm surprised at right now Roxy that's a good basket needed that one is that they hadn't been to the free throw line yet. That's really surprising. Even for a three-point team, Tillman and McCants would be the most likely to get there because they can go inside and score points. But they've got to work their way out of the hole they've dug. The rebound, Donnie Tillman, and a whistle behind the play. And it appears we have a foul called. As Mike Reed explaining things to Bryce Drew, they may go to the monitor to take a look and see this last sequence. As Mike Reed working with Del Drake Carr, Larry Spaulding, Sean Lehigh is the alternate official in this game. And there's Mike Reed going over to the monitor. See, there was something said. These two just going at it. They're, I believe the they're looking guys. at Johnny McCants in of New Mexico State, Gabe McLaughlin. Did McLaughlin of Grand go a, Canyon a punch. getting tangled up? Well, not a punch, did he? Yeah. The two big guys going at it. This is for the championship. It's been a clean game. Now, we've had very few fouls called in this game. And when you look at that sequence, do you see anything that warrants anything there, Adrian? Yeah, I, I played in the time with Rick Mahorn. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and the bad boys. So, I mean, come on. Flag. Flag football, come on. <laughs> Lighten up. And what keep an eye on the right. There's McCants and McLaughlin getting tangled up. Not much there. I mean, if there's <laughs> anything it, to me, Adrian, it'll be matching Play offsetting. On. Yeah, I, I didn't see anything. And this has been a well played game, well called game. I thought that very first possession was a quick whistle, but the referees hadn't been loud. But again, Rock, you're asking somebody in the 80s, man. I had a knot on the top of my head because of Rick Mahorn in the Summer League. You asking me was 
<laughs> and that was in the oh. summer league. That wasn't even during the regular season. Oh, my goodness. Guys, yeah. So I don't, I don't think it should be much. Grand Canyon up 16. Last night they handled Seattle U 81-47 when Bryce Drew talked about it. It was one of our better defensive games of the year and shooting games too as they held Seattle U to 28%. They shot 50% last night, out-rebounded the Red Hawks by 24 last night. And it was the largest blowout win in a WAC semi since 1995. So now... Michael Reed is summoning Off Bryce Drew and Chris Jans to midcourt to explain what they are deciding here. And again, we are not in Las Vegas. We are not courtside at Orleans Arena. We are in our respective homes. But if I'm going to guess there's a flagrant one getting assessed at Grand Canyon. That's just Yeah, I thought I he was to, going to, to throw a uh, uh, forearm to the... Uh, for, to the chest but I mean those two big guys locking horns you're going to make contact two well coached teams two competitive teams it's been a great game so it, by appearances it is a flagrant one against Gabe McLaughlin and it's his second foul and it's Johnny McCants shooting at the line and the first free throws of the game for the Aggies so the flagrant one means two shots, which McCants makes, and New and Mexico State gets possession. But I, I'm not mad at McLaughlin because that's his job. He's an energy guy. He's active. He's blocking out. So you're going to have guys. I mean, emotions are, are flying, but it's been emotions under control so far. 14-point lead for the Lopes, who tried to turn this into Lopes Vegas yeah <laughs> hey, uh, Rox remember I was saying you want to get under 10 points by the 10 minute mark this is a huge opportunity for the Aggies to try to cut to this lead some more against the zone from Grand Canyon Donnie Tillman penetrates Evan Gilliard from the corner and bodies go crashing again and it looks like we have a double foul McCants for New Mexico State and Alessandro Labor for Grand Canyon. And on the double foul, it goes to a possession arrow and which belongs to New Mexico State. Let's see on this block out. McCants got away with one already tussling. I uh, didn't see much there. Now that was clean both ways. And the arrow was yeah. with Grand Canyon, on, so it is Grand Canyon's ball in possession arrow. But a double foul going to Labor, his second, and Johnny McCants, his second. We're trying to keep control of the game, anticipating. Let these guys get back to playing. Pass broken up by Johnny McCants. Problem for New Mexico State, Adrian, is even when the Aggies force a turnover, Grant Canyon is doing an excellent job of getting back defensively where New Mexico State can't attack. Well, they, they respect the ability of New Mexico State. That's nothing but respect. Greatest nice ball movement. Jabari Rice slithers in along the baseline. Pat Riley, my Hall of Fame coach with the Lakers, now down in Miami for years, would say the greatest respect you can have for your opponent is to play hard. And both teams have respect for each other. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by SoFi. Get your money right. 51-39. Grand Canyon leads New Mexico State. Yes, it's 51-39. Six-nothing run for New Mexico State to cut it to 12. It's been a tough year for... A lot of people around the WAC, but especially the program at UT Rio Grande Valley who lost their head coach. The WAC coach of the year, Lou Hill, passed away in early February. A terrific man. I, I didn't know Lou well. I knew him casually. Adrian, I'd spent some time around him when he was an assistant to Lon Kruger at both Oklahoma and UNLV, but just a tragic situation. You feel for his family, his friends. 
the UT RGB community and that program, and you wish everybody the best for a tough time. Absolutely. Uh, here, here. I, I totally agree with you and echo that same sentiment. Thank you, Roxy. Johnny McCants from deep, and the rebound controlled by Javon Blackshear. And here comes Grand Canyon. It led by as many as 18. Well, straight David up, we Lobbin got the mismatch. Oscar Freyer. For now, it's a two. They're going to review it at the next time out. You saw Mike Reed, the referee, twirling his fingers, which means they're going to go to the monitor at the next dead ball the next time out to see if it was a two or a three. So for now, it's a two for Oscar Freyer. And a travel on Donnie Tillman. Donnie has passed up two shot opportunities, one time over penetrating. Now right here with Oscar, this is a credit to Bryce Drew and his staff. Yes, they've been encouraging him for the, this season to step into that shot. He's shooting it with confidence. Remember I said a few possessions ago, he's missed a few of them, but they've been good shots. You've got to take good shots. Donnie Tillman the same way. Don't over penetrate, take a good shot when it's open. And when Turn they around, go look review it, when they go review that, I think they will see it's a three. So that will be make it 56-39, Grand Canyon. 11.46 to go. Bryce Drew trying to get Grand Canyon to the big dance. This is a memorable day, anniversary for Bryce Drew. No, no. Did he get a residual check on that that they showed him <laughs> each time? Each time they show that one, did he get a check? 23 years ago today is Javon Blackshear the miss and the rebound off of New Mexico State. It belongs to Grand Canyon. He just feels like a safe guy. You almost want a glass of milk around him, you know? <laughs> I didn't say that one. No, coach. Well, you, you, coach. if you add up the wins of the Drew family between dad, Homer, and of course, 600, over 600. His brother, Scott. 1,204 wins, the second most among the family of coaches behind the Ibis. Oh, wow. How about that one? Oscar Freyer, it was ruled a three, by the way. They did review it during the timeout, that shot. So it is 56-39, and Donnie Tillman saves it out of bounds off of Asbjorn Midgard. Rox, you always hit me with something I didn't know. I'm always constantly learning from you. Most of it is what I don't want to be like, but... <laughs> <laughs> that was good, bro. That was good. I learned something. 11 minutes to go. If you're the Aggies, don't over, don't over penetrate a good shot when you get a shot opportunity. And McCants can't hang on to it. And a turnover by New Mexico State. And you got to get back to work. If you're the Aggies, get back to work. You want to limit GCU to one shot and done. GCU so far has been hitting timely baskets. It's in the zone for the first time, Rocks. They're trying anything to get Grant Canyon out of rhythm. Corner three, Oscar Freyer rattles out. And a foul going for the rebound. It's on Gabe McLaughlin of Grant Canyon, number three on him. Gabe has given him some good minutes. He's active. He has a presence, plays bigger than his frame. I like what he brings to the table. He gives him good last, minutes. Last night he had a season high, 14 points and 14 rebounds. His first double-double, yeah. and he began his college career at Southeast Missouri State. Dennis Rodman territory. And then came back to the Valley of the Sun. He's from Gilbert, Arizona. Up and under and off balance was Jabari Rice. Got it over to Donnie Tillman. Tillman bumped and a foul and Alessandro Labor in disbelief. Attorney ticket will be punched by the winner of the Air Force Reserve American Conference Championship game, Cincinnati and Houston. Foul against really Grand Canyon. Rocks. I'd really like to see them run at Tillman when he's in a scoring position right here because of his speed and quickness You can't leave labor on an island like that, but they don't want to leave the three-point shooter 
So you're picking your poison. They gave the foul to Alessandro Labor, his fourth. As Donnie Tillman, a 77% foul shooter, misses the first. So Labor will sit with the four fouls with 10.01 to go. in double figures now, 11 points. Roxy, it's Mexico all about, State. yeah, it's all about the execution right here. You've got to be able to execute now that you're under 10 minutes in the second half. This is getting close to winning time. Abe McLaughlin in the key. the largest lead for Grand Canyon. Johnny McCants up, up and, and under. under. And the follow goes for Jabari Rice. Let's see if they can get Big Ash a touch down low. He shoots 71% from the field, leads the nation 71%. Gabe McLaughlin rattles out, and the Aggies control. The Aggies are one push away from cutting into this lead. And you kind of feel them trying to get on the run, get a spurt going. The leaner, tough shot for C.J. Roberts. Next dead ball after eight minutes will be a timeout. This will be a good timeout for GCU. They're going to use it now. So a 30 taken by Bryce Drew. He's actually going to take his full time out here. 14 point lead, eight and a half minutes to go. Grand Canyon, New Mexico State, the WAC Championship. Grand Canyon, the Havoc, have made the trek up to Las Vegas and trying to punch their ticket for the first time in school history. They lead in this WAC Championship game over New Mexico State, 58-44 with Adrian Branch. Roxy Bernstein with you from our home studios. The game being played at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. And the WAC is going to have a little bit of a different look to it the next few years, going through some changes. As the offensive rebound and a slam for Asgard Midgard. The new sooner or later, they were going to get him the ball. He has been their most active player in the paint, and you've got to feed the big guy. Second chance opportunities going in. Nice job putting it in the basket. 71% field goal percentage. Leads the nation. Wilfred Lakai the foul for New Mexico State. Nick Guard one for one from the line in this one. And now with 10 points. As Grand Canyon pushes the lead out to 17, but Abilene Christian, who is coming into the WAC, is there's going to be a little bit of an overhaul. Abilene Christian just won the Southland Championship. They're going to the NCAA tournament. As pretty soon, the WAC is going to have six teams from the state of Texas, the most from the state of Texas in any conference in America. And the That's WAC expansion, state. the five new members. There is Abilene Christian, Lamar, Sam Houston State, Stephen F. Austin, and then Southern Utah will lead the Big Sky and come to the WAC. And, ooh, a nice hustle getting back to block the shot of Mikey Dixon. And now countering is Donnie Tillman to the basket, and he blows the layup. Oh, you got to hit that one, Donnie. You got to reward that effort. Got to reward that effort. That's tough. Now you got to play defense for 24 seconds. Balls off for Javon Blackshear. And the putback by Asbjorn Midgard. That's just seven footers going against 6'5" in the paint. That is what Coach Jans, that was a concern for him, offensive rebound. Largest lead for Grand Canyon inside seven minutes to go. Where you've got to hit key shots. Got to move now. If you're a black jersey, you've got to continue to move the defense. 
Well Tough short shot. from C.J. Roberts, pulled down by Gabe McLaughlin. Let's see if they go to Midgard again. There's not a body out there that physically can match up with them for the Aggies. Didn't like that possession from the start, Rocks. Never look for your post player. You've got to know, have a feel for the game, and know where you have the advantage. That was a poor possession. Got a low. Open for three. Wolford Lakai missing from downtown, and then Grand Canyon saves it from going out of bounds. Coach Drew imploring him to get back to Blackshire. Let's see again if they can take advantage of Midgard in the post. Basic basketball. In no hurry. There it is down low. Dixon driving. Knocked away, picked up by Jabari Rice. New Mexico State looks to push, and they have a three on two. Evan Gilliard drains a three. Timeout Aggies as Evan Gilliard nails his third three-pointer. He's got 13 points. How about the proud performance in New Mexico State? They have been here seven out of eight years in the championship game. Eight out of nine. Now, this is the second time today we've seen this from behind. Coming down, nice effort blocking that shot. They're a champion as well, so they're not going to go out easily. Then running out, I like what I'm seeing. No quit. They're going to give you everything they have. That's the strength of the Aggies, the three-point shooting. 63-47 Grand Canyon. As New Mexico State now with eight threes tonight, but they're just eight for 27. Shooting 38% overall against a team Grand Canyon that limits their opposition to under 38% per game. And as we've talked about throughout the night, they have the second best defensive field goal percentage in America. They're a balanced team, and a lot of times for a young team, as your offense goes, so your defense follows, because when you're making shots, you feel better on the defensive end. But right now, Grand Canyon is five minutes and 27 seconds away from going to the dance for the first time. I don't think it's going to be easy. you got to go through the mountain. Third consecutive WAC championship game that has matched up New Mexico State and Grand Canyon. Previous two have gone via the Aggies. It would take a ferocious Tom back to make it three straight and a three for Evan Gilliard. What did I just say, Rox? It's not going to be easy. You've got to beat the reigning champion, conference tournament champion. They're not going to give it to you. You've got to take it. So this means you've got to execute. You've got to be mentally tough and not turn that basketball over. Nice drop off to Oscar Freyer, who is fouled. Freyer will shoot to the senior from Oakland. Second foul on Evan Gilliard. And Oscar Freyer, former member of the WAC All defensive team, who was the all time leading shot blocker in Grand Canyon history. And the first one, no good. He's only a 53% foul shooter. And Freyer originally had committed to Cal, was going to stay at home in the Bay Area. But then opened up his recruitment and decided to get away from home and he went to down to Phoenix in Grand Canyon. Well, he's a big time talent, so athletically, you're not surprised. Gotta knock down these opportunities. You can't leave the door open for the Aggies. From the Aggies, play to your strength. Move the ball around, look for a high percentage three-point shot and attack the glass. There's the zone again from the Lopes. Evan Gilliard in and out on the three and hustling for the rebound with Clayton Henry, but taken away. Javon Blackshear pushes and makes a smart decision to back it out. Yeah, you can run some clock. Alessandro Labor missing a three. He's back in the game with his four fouls. Last touch by New Mexico State. 3.59 remaining. Bryce Drew and Grand Canyon. Closing in on going to the big dance in Las Vegas.
Grand Canyon trying to do something they've never done. They're three minutes and 59 seconds away from going to the NCAA tournament for the first time in the history of the program. They have played a strong game from the outset, leading by as many as 19. But New Mexico State trying one last surge has scored the last six points to close to within 13. Of the execution now. If you're a white jersey, you've got to get a high percentage shot without turning the ball over. Shot clock inside 10. Devon Blackshire, who has 17 tonight to lead the Antelopes. Sean Miller Moore, desperation three. And an offensive rebound by Laver and a reset for GCU. Well, again, you've got 6'5 trying to block out 6'10. And a foul. Only the sixth team foul. And number three on Evan Gilliard. The offensive rebounds have been the best friend of Grand Canyon. When you look at what they've been doing, it's 11 to 5. And that gives them a possession. You get a chance to set your defense. Good things happen for you. Now, 326 Roxy, before we go to the dance, can they finish and seal the deal? The Aggies are not going to go out quietly. They're going to give you what they have. Trying to run some clock. Miss from Midgard is controlled by New Mexico State. Back in the zone now, Roxy. They've got to go quickly. You can't do a lot of walking and talking. You've got to go quickly. Need to have that urgency. Here's Tillman. Johnny McCann steps out. Can't get the three. And last touch by New Mexico State. It belongs to Grand Canyon. Now Grand Canyon scoreless for the last four and a half minutes, but they're keeping New Mexico State off the board. Just trying to play the clock as much as they're playing the Aggies right now. Yeah, because there's only been four free throw attempts as well. So if you're not scoring and your opponent isn't scoring, the clock is the only thing that's running. Fourth foul on Evan Gilliard. And now in the one and one for Grand Canyon as they're in the bonus. It'll be Oscar Freyer to the line who is 0 for 2. Pass too far out in front, trying to get it to Donnie Tillman. And we're going back the other way with Grand Canyon and 2.31 to go. At this point, you got to get a sense for the emotions. For Grand Canyon right now, they can sense it. They can taste what they're on the cusp of. They need to finish this one off. And ain't going against their rival, which would make it sweeter if they can pull it off. It's not going against a team that has not been a perennial winner in this. Another foul. This one is on Clayton Henry. And Oscar Freyer will go back to the line. A one and one on the eighth team foul. Well, he's telling him just to slow down. Remember the mechanics over the front rim. Backspin, follow through. Don't overanalyze it. One more for Freyer. Encouragement, encouragement. That's what Bryce Drew learned from his dad. Encouragement. His brother Scott is the tactician. Bryce Drew in his first year taking over for Dan Marley, who was the head coach at Grand Canyon, who guided this program up to Division I status and did a really nice job. But after last season, they felt they needed to make a change and Bryce Drew has come in and he's now just over two minutes away from getting Grand Canyon to the NCAA tournament. Well you look at the board in this championship game there are plus 11 on the boards they're shooting 46 percent most of the game it was 50 percent and they've been able to dominate so you look at the bench production as well it's been fantastic 15 to 4 statistically GCU has put a masterpiece in but again 
you've got to finish it. There you see the havoc up above the New Mexico State bench. The Grand Canyon students who came up by the busload from Phoenix. They travel well. I like the crew that has the painted on shirts. After it, I hope they don't think it's a tearaway shirt, Roxy. That would be painful. <laughs> and a season I 18 for Evan Hillier. 13 point game. Here he has put together a nice game. 4 11 at the three point line. I know you live in the Phoenix area. You know all about the havoc, the student section there at Grand Canyon. And it's become one of the dominant home courts on the West Coast. Oh, yeah. Coach Drew said, you look at Duke, Kansas, and GCU, he thinks are the best home courts in the nation. And you can't argue pound for pound. It, it gets loud in that place. Look, it's good, don't get me wrong, and there's some of them that have made the trek up here. But got a little ways to go to get to Kansas Duke, Gonzaga level. He said the atmosphere, the atmosphere. I, I, I tell you what, ESPN loves to call a game, and I dare you to say that. Hey, you guys aren't Duke, <laughs> aren't as loud as Duke <laughs> or the kennel. Rocks? <laughs> I would not want to be your co-pilot on that one. <laughs> Hey, you played it, too. I don't remember what you said. You huh? know how loud it was. You knew what they said about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Football move. And a foul will put Dixon at the line for Grand Canyon with a minute 44 to go. Third on Donnie Tillman. Getting close, Roxy. Getting close. You can hear the crowd. They want this one. Think about it. New Mexico State has been blocking GCU for the last three years that they've attempted to win the tournament. How sweet it can be if they can pull this off. Double bonus now and two shots for Mikey Dixon. 76% foul shooter, the senior from the first state. Do you know what the first state is? Delaware, sir. Delaware. Delaware is the first state. Yeah. That's right beside. That's right beside. Transfer from St. John's. The state of for lovers, Maryland. Been through my state, Maryland, before Rock. Oh, yeah. One out of two for Dixon. But I also am thinking about right now the Hall of Famer, Jerry Colangelo. Because oh, he is intimately goodness. involved with Grand Canyon and the program and has been a strong supporter and really has been an advocate for the university and the athletic program at, at Grand Canyon. And I was down in Phoenix a few years ago for the event at Talking Stick Arena downtown, the home of the Suns, that the Hall of Fame Classic where Grand Canyon played Nevada and also Gonzaga played Tennessee. And I just know how much pride he takes in this program, the way they represent themselves and the success that they're having. And here, I know I know he's in the arena tonight watching. A minute 24 to go from seeing that dream come to life in reality that Grand Canyon will go to the NCAA tournament. Oh yeah, Mr. C is all about all the good stuff. And you hear where you've been around people that are really significant and they give you their time. I actually met him through Shaquille O'Neal's coach, Coach Dale Brown, and so, I'm, I'm all for who Mr. C is about. I think he's underrated for his contributions in sport. 80 seconds. And at the same time, with the elation that Grand Canyon is going to experience here, Adrian, you feel for kids like Johnny McCants in New Mexico State, because of everything they've gone through this season. And playing basketball in a pandemic and dealing with COVID has been an issue for every program in America. And every program has their unique story. It's how it's affected them and, and the kids and what they've had to do and how isolated they have been. But New Mexico State has had as hard a road as any team in America and what they've had to deal with, if not harder. And you have to credit Christians, the support at New Mexico State, the kids in the program for the sacrifices they've made along the way. And unfortunately, 
Their season will end tonight with a loss in the WAC championship game, but they have a lot to be proud of. Oh, absolutely. When you're talking about they've had 87 out of 110 days in hotels and where Coach has been able to be a father figure, a mentor to them, and he says there's going to be better days. So absolutely, absolutely, they're all about the right thing. New Mexico State is going to be fine. They represent that university very well. And now some substitutions and the celebration beginning on the Grand Canyon sideline and their bench area as they can sense they're a minute away from reaching that dream. One minute remaining in the game. One minute remaining. And a foul will send New Mexico State to the line. And that foul is on Liam Lloyd of Grand Canyon. And I'm waiting for his dad to text me in three, two, one that I singled out his kid. <laughs> his dad, Tommy Lloyd, is Mark Hughes' right hand, the associate head coach at Gonzaga. Oh, yeah, there we go. Come on. Coach, and, your son is out here hacking on the championship. I'm going to say to literally you, one of my favorite people in college basketball. Oh, Tommy it's Lloyd. beautiful. It's beautiful. Lloyd's a classy people. Looks just like his dad as well. Well, Roxy, this is going to be sweet for the Lopes because it's against their rival. It's against the team that's had, held the crown. And now they are going through the, the mountain, and this man here has been the architect of getting it over the hump. Gerald Dokes, the freshman, makes two out of three for New Mexico State. Come on, get it to 21. I want to see Liam Lloyd fire one up. <laughs> nice. Going deep into the bench now is Grand Canyon. Makes it 74-56. You know, Liam got and a deflection there. Say his name again. One more time. We need one for Coach Lloyd. You want Liam Lloyd to jack one up, don't you? Let's go. Liam, jack no, one up is again. Run He's out classy. the clock. The last point's coming from Bryce Oko. Ten seconds away. A dream season in tough circumstances for the Grand Canyon Antelopes. But GCU, Grand Canyon, for the first time, is headed to the NCAA tournament.